Hi, in this video, we will brief you through the overview of the approach that we are used in creating the battery management system algorithm development masterpiece. So to, to brief you through the approach that we have done, let me invite my teammate, Mr. Krishna. Hi Krishna, so I request you to give us a run through about how we have developed this course and the way we have used an industry methodology in creating the battery management system algorithm. Over to you. Sure, sir. Let me walk you through the approach to the BMS development course. So here you can see we have divided the whole course into two sections. One with a plant model development. On the other side, you can see a controller model development. So first, I will go through you the plant model development and then uh, reach it to the control model development. So in the first plant model development, we'll start with a test requirement setup. So here the objective is that you need to develop a cell model which has to behave or like maybe in the real time. So for that you need to conduct a testing for the cell such as uh, like HPCC test or capacity test where you will gather the data. With those data, with the data driven method, uh, we will be using IQL circuit approach. So with that, you can go for cell model development. So once you are done with the cell model development, so you can take the cell model for the testing and validation. So with the different input scenarios or the different conditions, you can test the cell model and also you can compare the same test data with the realistic uh, cell model data uh, that where you connect it at the real time with the hardware. So once the validation of the cell model is done, that is nothing but your plant model development is done. So further, uh, we will move to the controller model development. So in this part, uh, like we will be studying the control model development. So the first phase of the control model development is a requirement setup. Where these requirements, you will be getting it from the OEMs. So according to OEMs, whatever the requirements they give, you need to set the documents. Where you will be making use of requirement tool to set those uh, requirements which is given by the OEM. So where you will be understanding the requirement tagging, uh, SRBD, report generation and many other topics related to the uh, requirement setup. So once the requirement setup is done, you will be giving to the design team where with those requirements, they will start with the BMS model development. In the BMS model development, uh, they will be undergoing the algorithms uh, such as SOC estimation, SOH estimations and the optimization algorithms such as self balancing and the production logics and, and other algorithms. So here you will be using uh, MATLAB and Sublime and Stateflow, you will be developing all these algorithms. So once the BMS model development is done, further you will be uh, taking the model to uh, compile the model to the standard phase, where you will be checking your model whether they are following the MAP guidelines. The purpose of these MAP guidelines is that uh, multiple people will be working in terms of developing the model. So in order to keep it some standard, uh, will be defined, uh, those standards will be defined in the map conditions. So with, in order to like set the model in standard format, uh, we need to uh, keep the model as standard with the help of map guidelines. So for that, we will be using sibling check as a toolbox in order to uh, check whether the model is going to satisfy the uh, map conditions or like map guidelines. Once the model is compiled to the standard, we can take the model for testing. So in the model testing, we will be making use of Sibling test as a toolbox for the testing phase. So where with the different input scenarios, you are going to test the model. We will be creating the test harness for the model which you have developed that is your controller model. So to the test harness model, we will be creating different input scenarios such as like logic based testing, uh, internal and external based testing. So with those 
you will be checking whether you are getting the desired results or not. So again, in the testing, uh, there are different uh, tests can be done with the help of test manager. That is uh, like baseline test, equivalence test, and a simple simulation test. So again, you can like conduct the other testing that uh, runtime analysis approaches and uh, the advanced uh, runtime analysis methods. So with those, uh, like all the testing, you can validate your model at the system level. Once the model testing is done, you will be taking your BMS for the design verification. So in this design verification, we will be making use of design verifier tool. So with the help of design verifier tool, you can like check whether any errors found in the design. So how you can like debug those errors and then how you can optimize that you can like study uh, in this phase. After that, uh, we can also conduct a code coverage analysis or like logical uh, logic part of your or the any algorithm part of your model coverage analysis and property proving concepts. So with those all concepts, you can say that the model is verified in terms of design and it is ready for the further part of the process. So once the design, uh, the model underbound with the design verification, you can integrate with the cell model. So here, uh, in this phase, you are going to integrate the cell and the BMS model. Once uh, the integration of cell and BMS model is done, uh, you will be again running in loop. We call it as, as model in loop, that is mill simulation. So the purpose of this model in loop simulation, whether the model controller, which is in the model phase, that is BMS model, it's really controlling the cell. So the purpose of this phase, uh, that is the model in loop simulation, is there any criticality or like instead of using the algorithm or the real hardware, first we can simulate in the system level environment and then once we validate that it is a safe and we can make use and it's all the logics and algorithms are perfectly working. With that confidence, we can move with the software in loop testing. So in the software in loop testing, we can make use of test manager and the sale manager as a tool uh, to conduct a software in loop testing and the verification. So here, uh, like we will be converting the controller model where it contains the algorithms and the production logic and converting that into the code and again testing with the same input scenarios and comparing those uh, the results what you get from the software in loop simulation whether they are like uh, correct or like are, we are, are we getting the desired outputs so with that we can move to the processor in loop where uh, we will be making use of fill manager so in this part uh, like a real time controller will be involved uh, like and you will be controlling the cell model which is at the system level. So in that way you, you will be conducting the verification that we call it as fill. So once the fill is done, uh, you can like take it for the code generation where you will be making use of sibling coder or the embedded coder for the generating of the controller model, the code part. So, here again in the code generation uh, where we are making use of embedded coder there like we will be again optimizing the code uh, according to our needs uh, in order to make the compatible with the real time controller so all this process uh, like will be carried out at the embedded coder part so once the code is done and verified and optimized further you can take it for the deployment into the hardware so this is the overview of your uh, the whole course development approach that is your master course development. So back to you, Suraj. Thank you very much, Krishna, for giving us a great run through about how exactly this course has been developed. If you see, it's a holistic approach that we have utilized in creating this course. So to kind of recap the whole thing, 
we started in creating the plant model first. The plant model we also can call it as a digital twin of the cell. Because you have seen it, if there is any generated code which is from this whole process, if it need to be verified or if it need to be tested correctly, we need to have the digital twin. In case we take this controller and try to implement it in the real hardware, if there is any fault, it can create a very hazardous scenario, right? That is one of the reasons why we created our plant model. Again, on top of that, for the only purpose of testing these algorithms, we also need the plant model to be also present in some of the estimation algorithms, such as in Kalman filters. We still use the plant model also to be the part of the SOC estimation algorithms or SOH estimation algorithms as well. That's why you have learned how to create a plant model first. And to create the plant model, we need the set of parameters, right? Those parameters we have taken in from the cell testing. So when the learner comes to the offline center at Bangalore, where they can actually conduct the tests as Krishna was briefing about, such as HPC, HPCC test, or the capacity test, or a cyclic aging test, or the charging and discharging at various different, different temperatures as well. We can conduct all of those tests, get the data, create the plant model, verify the plant model, whether it is really behaving as same as your real-time cell. So you have the digital twin until here. So once the digital twin is done, then we move to the control model development. As Krishna was briefing, let's say you work for a Taiwan supplier like Bosch or Continental or Del Delphi, or maybe any company who makes the battery management system, right? So you get your requirements from the OEMs, maybe it is Hara Motors or Mahindra or Mercedes or BMW or anyone. They give the system level requirements that what do they want the BMS to do, right? So those inputs are given to you and you are the guy who going to develop these algorithms. If you have to develop those algorithms, you need to ensure, you need to capture all of those input parameters into your requirement. And then those input requirements need to be distributed to various different teams. For example, nobody will create all of these algorithms individually, right? Only part of your SOC can be done by one person. So for him to write those algorithms, he need to know what he can do as a part of the whole project. So you take your requirements document and convert the requirement document so that where you'll be able to identify how do you split all of those big documents into a dividable work patterns. Also as a part of this requirement setup, you can create various different test cases and testing scenarios as well. So that once the model is developed, how do you test this model? How do you ensure that this is meeting the input requirement that OEM has given to you? That is what the requirement engineers will typically do. So that is where we use a requirement tool as well, which is a part of the MATLAB, uh, the work, the toolboxes. In continuation that you understood that out, you can also develop your controller logics, where you use largely the state flow in, in an extension to MATLAB and Simulink, where you'll be able to write all the estimation algorithms or optimization algorithms, and also the protection algorithms. In continuation to that, where in industry, because as I said, not one person will do everything, right? So not one person will create the whole of algorithms and test them as well. So we need to ensure that the model is a standard approach. It is created in a very organized manner. So that is where there's a map standards will come into a picture. They ensure that the model that is created is in a very organized fashion, which is can be used in various different activities of product development. Also can be understood by other engineers as well in the whole product development journey. So once you met your map guidelines, we have gone through a journey where you will be able to test all your codes within the simulating testing environment to ensure that this logic that you have developed will work efficiently in the specific conditions with respect to your testing inputs. Then you enter into a design verifier, you ensure that the algorithm that you are trying to develop will work efficiently at the hardware level through your design verifier. So once you extend that, you want to test your control logics having the real cell. But the problem is you want to test this in the real cell, there can be a false scenario as well. right? So to avoid that, we can bring in your plant model and put your control model and the plant model together, marry them, and then where you'll be able to perform a lot of testing scenarios, right? So in the part of testing scenarios where we use the mill cylinder fill, where you can actually test all your algorithms that you develop and verify them whether they work in a, with any given condition with respect to your test requirements as well. As an end part of it, the overall journey of mills and mill, sill and fill gives you the confidence that your algorithm will work efficiently in all the possible scenario and it is having less prone to any failure conditions and it meets any of your requirement document requirements. 
So once it meets all of these things, you can use the Simulink coder or a embedded coder. You can generate a code and then you can deploy the code as well into a target controller. So when you walk through the journey like this, you get a holistic approach of developing the algorithms for the battery management system. It is not only for the battery management system, you can also use the same approach in maybe motor controller development, in maybe VCU development, or any other applications as well in the industry. So the whole of this course has been created in a, a right manner that the way how people does uh, in developing the controller logic developments. So with the help of this course, you'll be able to create algorithms in an industry manner and test them, verify them, also generate the code, implement them in the real hardware and understand that how your real hardware behaves when you put the cell uh, in the real world. So with this way, you will gain the confidence, you will gain the standard approaches, methodologies in creating the algorithms and testing and verifying the algorithms and deploying those algorithms in the real time hardware as well. So I believe this course can give you a lot of confidence and, and an industry experience with the help of many projects so that you can become a, a best person to get picked for the industry opportunities. This is an overview way we have created this course uh, with the help of a lot of toolboxes and a lot of projects and case studies so that you can learn to the best possible extent. Thank you.